Hi, Ali Shavalis here, and today I want to share with you a an intimacy building exercise. This is one of the most recommended, one of the exercises that I recommend most frequently to the couples that I work with. Um, it's a really powerful tool, and um, nothing is relevant for everyone, but this one is relevant for really most couples. It's one of these things that could potentially transform or breathe new life into a relationship in really like less than 15 minutes a day. It's really, really simple, really easy. Um, it's just a matter of consistency, which is hard to do, but you know, if you do it, you're really going to be happier than I think. There are a couple of caveats. The main one being that this is only a good idea if both partners are on board and feel that they could benefit from these exercises so I want to share them with you um, and it's really the exercise is really three exercises in one you can do all three you can just do one you can do two of them they work best as a group together but if let's say one of the parties in the couple feels like I there's one that I would have a hard time with then just eliminate that one for now and stick with the ones that you feel like you could do well with okay it's incredibly powerful it's not magic it's not for everyone but I found that like the couples who will do this consistently even imperfectly like if I say I think you should do this seven days a week and you can only do it for a five days a week but you do it like consistently four or five days every week um, will usually report almost always report like meaningful improvements in their sense of connection and their sense of hopefulness as for the future as the relationship really in as little as a couple of weeks um, okay so here's how you start. You pick a time and a place and you set your alarms. You set your phones to ding, both of your phones to ding. Um, and then you get your devices af after your alarms go off. You put aside your devices in ideally a different room, but certainly not in arm's re reach. Okay, so the same time every day. Ideally, you want to pick a time that is um, that you're both likely to be home, awake, available, and least likely to be interrupted. I know for busy couples, sometimes that's very challenging, but this is the best way to do it if you can. Okay, why the same time daily? Because if you just wait for a time that you're both gonna be available, then you're unlikely to be consistent and make it happen. Um, why set alarms? Because I don't want it to be that one spouse or one partner is chasing after the other partner to say, hey, it's that it's time to do our exercises, we should go make that happen. Um, I don't want it to be one person's burden or responsibility. That's the same reason why I want you to meet in the same place. Again, just because your alarm's ding, I don't want it to be that one of you has to go chase down the other one. It really needs to be sort of a combined effort. You know, there could be mistakes or misunderstandings, but for for the most part, let's say you decide 9 p.m., the living room couch, kitchen table, whatever it is, pour yourself a glass of whatever you like to drink or just, you know, kind of make this time. Okay, so next thing you choose, this is exercise number one. You choose a book, a course, a video series, an audio content, um, something to learn together, something on healthy relationships. It doesn't necessarily have to be written by a therapist, but something that would be um, you know, intelligent and responsible and, and interesting to both of you. Um, in Jewish life, we have a concept called a chavrusa. A chavrusa is when two people decide to actively engage in learning material together and not just reading out loud, but like reading and discussing and processing it um, together really like a two-person study group. Some of the favorites, if you look on my website, elishevelis.com, I have a list of, uh, of resources of books that I like. Um, Seven Levels of Intimacy by Matthew Kelly, Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, Eight Dates by uh, John, Got John and Julie Gottman and another couple that I'm forgetting their name, um, Fierce Intimacy by Terrence Real. There's lots of really great books. The best book to read is the one that resonates with you that you're actually going to Get, go ahead and read. Um, and if you're not enjoying the one that you chose, it's okay to switch. It's less important what you're reading and what you're doing and more important that you're making the time to do it as a couple. Um, five to seven minutes, not more. Why only five to seven minutes? Because what typically happens is you start the first day and you're like, wow, this is so nice. This is so interesting. This feels so good to be doing this. And you keep going for like an hour and a quarter and you're like, oh, wow, we did our whole week's worth of learning t today. And then you never pick it up again. So if you say, I'm just going to do like five to seven minutes a day, like everybody's got five to seven minutes and, um, then you'll do it more consistently and you won't like overdose the first time and then, and then not want to come back to it again. Um, okay, so that's exercise number one, five to seven minutes of reading and processing um, useful, healthy marriage content. Um, what does this do? This introduces new material into your relationship for you to be able to like kind of grow and focus. You know, when we're learning something, when we're focusing on something, we tend to improve on it. It tends to be more on our minds. We tend to take it more seriously. Um, Okay, the next exercise is called the two minute touch. So any any day that is a possibility for you, um, again, if you do these exercises back to back, it's easiest. Um, you sit together and you create a format of touch with each other that is non-sexual, non-erogenous, fully clothed, not foreplay. Um, if you are planning to have sexual activity that, that day or that night, leave it for like another time. This should not lead into sex. 
Um, the reason that I want you to focus on just the uh, the non-sexual touching is because for a lot of couples, specifically um, a lot of women will sometimes say like, oh, my, uh, my, my husband, my partner only touches me um, when, when he wants sex. And so what this does is, you know, sex is very intense. It's like, you know, dopamine uh, focused, and this is oxytocin. It's a cuddle hormone. It's kind of opening the lines of physical communication for the couple. You could do this quietly with some music playing, um, but ideally um, not too much talking. You really want to focus on that sense of like enjoyable touch without distraction. Um, it's, it builds affection. It's It builds safety. It keeps you know, it keeps you feeling like more pleasured and connected and loving. Um, you can lay in each other's laps, you can stroke each other's hair, it could be a back rub, it could be a chills on the arm, like any kind of touch that feels like sweet and nice and tender and not rushed, just two minutes. Um, and this is really something that like builds physical intimacy in a non-sexual way. And then the third exercise is what I call the five minute share. So some couples won't feel like they need this because they do it organically all the time. Uh, other couples might feel like it's very difficult for them to do this because it's something that they haven't done in a long time or it doesn't come naturally to them or they're not very conversational at all. Um, but I'll tell you what it is and then you, know, you can decide if it's right for your relationship. So a lot of couples fall into the groove of being mainly roommates or, or co-parents in some cases or co-captains of the same ship, people who just pay the same bills and run the same household, put out the same fires that come up. Um, and they spend a lot of their dialogue in like what I think of as business meetings. Like, oh, did we pay that bill? Did we take care of those plans? Did we, you know, what are we doing this weekend? What are we doing in the summer? You know, kind of like just making um, logistical and practical discussion and, uh, and, and plans. Um, this, they could be about work, about money, about schedule, about kids, you know, just like things that just have to get taken care of, you know, like business meetings. Um, so the point of the five minute share is to set aside just five minutes to talk about nothing practical, nothing planning, nothing responsibility oriented, um, or potentially argument inducing. Um, it could be deep and meaningful. It could be light and chatty. So some examples of what you can do in your five minute share are saying something like, um, I had such an interesting conversation today, or I read a really thought provoking article or book, or I heard uh, such an inspiring idea on a video or a lecture. Um, it doesn't have to be positive and upbeat. It could be, um, you know, I had a disturbing conversation today. I read a troubling uh, information, you know, piece uh, article, um, uh, you know, something that didn't resonate with me. I had a conversation that bothered me and, and uh, or it could be an old memory that resurfaced from childhood, a strange dream that you had, uh, an anecdote, a meme, a funny story. It could be, it could be light, it could be deeper, it could be more vulnerable. Um, it's really just talking for the sake of sharing, rekindling the friendship and the emotional intimacy in the relationship. But you do want to be mindful not to pick a topic, um, you know, pick a fight or choose a topic that's likely to, you know, that's a sore point in the relationship and that's likely to lead to an argument because that's the opposite of what we're trying to accomplish in the five minute share. And what this exercise does is it keeps you thinking about your partner during the day and looking for points of interest to share. And then you're really like on each other's minds. I like something comes up and be like, oh, I'm going to tell my partner that later in the share. So you're really thinking about each other all day long. And then during the share, you're like, oh, I was excited to tell you about this. I'm really curious to hear your opinion on it. Um, and so these three exercises, you know, the first one, um, it generates intellectual intimacy, you know, learning together, talking about the relationship, you know, not just from a place of problem solving or subjective perspectives, but introducing new content to process and um, apply and implement together and experimenting with it can be like very bonding, very refreshing, very connecting. The second exercise um, generates, like I said before, physical intimacy, but not like the way we use physical intimacy as like a euphemism for sexual activity, but um, but but real intimacy of bodies, like this closeness that's not that's not about being sexual, but really just feeling like your body is close to my body, and this means something to us. Um, and you know, practice touching to convey love and affection and warmth and connection, just for its own sake, not as a means to anything else, and trains your nervous system. For um, you know, for the, especially for the partner who might feel less interested in sexual activity, um, to trust that sometimes the, the touch is just loving. It's not like there's no agenda. Um, and the third exercise is to promote friendship and um, emotional connection and even like spiritual bonding. Right? There's like this sharing of thoughts and ideas and experiences um, that just keep the relationship fresh and keep introducing like more personal. Um, 
sharing, sharing because it's a five minute share, right? Um, anyway, so these are the three exercises that I recommend, five to seven minutes of reading, two minutes of affectionate touching, and five minutes of sharing information that you were unlikely to have shared with each other just for the sake of talking and conversation. Um, like I said before, not every exercise is for everyone. This is certainly not an exercise that's good for a couple that's um, very volatile or, or deeply dysfunctional or where one party um, says like, I hate that, I don't want to do that. But if both of uh, both partners hear this and are like, oh wow, I could see that really being good for us, um, then I invite you to go ahead and try this as an experiment for yourselves. Um, this is something that I recommend to lots of couples that I work with and I get lots of really great feedback about it. Um, it's not like like an official evidence-based thing. It's just something that you know came up with with working with my couples and just find that it's like a really doable, you know, some people are really into like, you know, have a weekly date night or go on a vacation. And like, those are nice things to do, but A, they're not always like practical and B, they're not always what everybody wants to be doing, uh, you know, at the end of a long day. And so this is like a 15 minute concentrated date of focus time that you can do in your pajamas in the comfort of your own home that you can pick up again if you slacked off a day or two. Um, and you can see like it's very intuitive and very obvious why this is a good investment in the relationship. So this is something that I highly recommend. I think it's uh, you know a, a great way to nurture and nourish your relationship. Um, I encourage you to try it out if it resonates for you. And if you happen to want to share your experience with it, I would love to hear from you about it. Um, if you want to email me at speak to someone at gmail.com. No, just speak to someone at gmail.com. If you'd like to see some other you know free content, written material and audio Audio and video material that I talk about relationships and mental health. You can go on my website, ellieshevelist.com. There's a blog, there's video stuff, there's lots of stuff there. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to share this video with anyone who you think um, would benefit from it, other couples, or if you're um, you know, a therapist. It's, I'm just making it because I just think this is such a useful thing to do and I want as many people to have access to it as possible. And have a wonderful day and wonderful relationship. Bye.